hey, 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 it's a dolphin, let's get inky and strap yourselves into your seats, peeps, because we've got a mega video today. As you might notice, this video is almost 40 minutes long. It's a bit of a double process video. And I wanted to show you something that I usually do over on Patreon, uh, but I wanted to give you guys a little look in case you were interested in what type of video content I do over there. So this is called an inky lift. And what I've done is I have chosen a journal page that I absolutely love, which is that first page that I just briefly showed you at the start of this video where there was a burlap and uh, normal paper heart inside my Dina Wakely uh, media journal and it's a process video that's over here on YouTube I'll link it down in the comments below if you haven't seen it before um, but it's definitely one of my favorite art journal pages that I've made and it's probably one of the ones that I get the most messages and comments about when people look at my um, album look at my album look at my art journal and so I wanted to try and inky lift it which is kind of like a scrap lift but I'm doing it journal to journal so this is a series that I've done for a little bit over on patreon and uh, today we're going to inky lift that into an art journal into my junk journal page and then I'm also doing a scrapbook layout which I don't usually do over on this channel I usually do those on my main channel uh, inky quill if you haven't heard of me over there but I wanted to put them both together uh, in this video to to give you a bit of an idea of what I've up to alrighty so now I the first step is I picked a page in my junk journal uh, and cut that heart shape out and I used it as a template to trace a heart on the left hand side as well so then I on the original art journal page there's I did some collage on the left hand side of the heart I think I was using maybe some serviettes napkins uh, you might call them where you've, you're from but I wanted to do something a little bit different and these were parts of a jelly plate print that I made over on my last uh, recent live stream that is uploaded now on my Inky Quill channel there's I think seven and a half hours of live streaming if you're bored and you need something to put on in the background while you're working uh, and I made, I played around with my jelly plate and printed some uh, pretty patterns onto deli paper. And they're really handy if you want to add some collage or some texture to your journal pages. And they're so easy to make, really quick and simple. You can get slightly carried away, as I often do. Whenever I set out to only make maybe one or two jelly prints, it ends up as more like 15 it's if you do have if you have done jelly plate printing in the past let me know I'm not the only one because I swear that the papers just multiply and I start off going oh I'll just do an extra one oh just one more and then suddenly I'm surrounded by paper and I can't move out <laughs> I've made myself a tiny little spot and the rest of the floor is covered in painted paper so now I'm using my extremely weak upper body strength to open uh, a bottle of blue dilutions paint. And I'm also using a little bit of water to water this down because I wanted to still see the blue, um, through the blue, I wanted to still see the text of this book page from my junk journal. I was tempted for a moment to maybe paint over the top of this collage, but I decided against it and I'm just going around, around the outside, uh, around the outside, if anyone gets that Eminem reference there. I, I can't say around the outside without repeating it twice. Uh, I wanted to, when I did this inky lift, sometimes I choose uh, the same colors or the same shapes or both. This time I wanted to do a very blue page. I don't know. I was just, you know, and sometimes you're just feeling a certain color. I wasn't feeling blue, literally, like I wasn't feeling sad, but I was just really into blue this day. So I thought I'd give it a go. And I also thought that it would look uh, really good against the pop of red on that uh, Love You on the right hand side. That's actually a Patreon printable of mine. It's an, one of my art prints from last year sometime and it's the center page of my uh, junk journal for this signature for this insert so 
I then grabbed my star stencil and in the original I think I used a swirly almost paisley like stencil but I definitely wanted to try something different and I thought that it would be really fun to use uh, the blue paint and sponge it on with my makeup sponge in a really dark way so that it makes a bit of a pop but it's not too contrasting and then just like the original I'm using the same stencil on the right hand side of the heart and I'm just trying to keep to the like the outside area the outside right hand side of the heart uh, just to give the heart a little bit of continuity across the two pages and um, not cover up too much of the book paper of course you can still tell that it's book paper and that's what I like about my junk journal is that I can still tell that some of the pages are um, pages from all over the place I use junk mail I use book pages I use scrapbook pages painted papers that I've done before uh, printables all sorts of bits and pieces and I got paint on this and that really annoyed me but I just decided to go with the flow and try to move on because I'm really trying to not sweat the small stuff especially in my junk journal I find it a lot easier uh, because I think because the pages already have a little something on them they've either got a background on them sometimes I use this journal kind of like a use it up journal and I just kind of chuck my paint in wherever I can willy-nilly and it just makes it less nerve-wracking uh, to start a page and to have the page perfect so if I get a little paint smudge where it's not supposed to go we'll just roll with it and move on I'll try to as I try to pick myself up every time there's always um, fails of that and you can see using my white uni ball gel signo broad gel pen uh, it just made those stars pop I really if you are starting mixed media the one thing that I think is one of the most important art supplies to go out and buy is a black paint pen and a white paint pen or a gel pen like this you can do so many things with just a black and a white pen uh, and it can really just make such a difference to your page so this is a photo if you're not a regular viewer this is a photo of my little Archie he's turning three next month peeps where has the time gone I have been over here on YouTube for many years before uh, he was born and I love that you all came along the, the journey when he was born uh, but holy moly where have three years gone tell me peeps because they've vanished I if you're a new viewer I also have a three month old uh, and I can't believe she's already three months as well but I in the original I used a photo of Archie at about I think he was about maybe nine months old or so he was less than a year old and I made that layout when he was young as well uh, so I thought it was only appropriate to use a, a more up-to-date photo uh, in this inky lift and kind of show how much he's grown this was also one of the jelly plate jelly ugh, getting my words mixed up jelly plate print say that three times fast uh, I wanted to use another jelly plate print there we go uh, for this little side of the page and this was one that was actually meant to be a bit of a fail it was meant to just be cleaning my plate but I love the way that it turned out it's a really soft almost lavender color and so I thought that would be perfect to use on the side here because it it's bluish but it also has, has a hint of that pinky purpley color that uh, is on some of the stars on that left hand side of the heart so I'm popping that there and I wanted to do some journaling but I wasn't quite sure how or where to do it uh, in the original I'm pretty sure that I did some journaling on strips of white card cardstock and then uh, stuck them to my page so I thought I'd do the same technique here and I have uh, definitely sped this next part up very fast because I didn't think you'd want to see me writing and cutting all of these tiny strips I wish I wrote this fast but unfortunately I don't so I'm just using some regular old white uh, printer cardstock and this is the cardstock that I use to usually mat all of my scrapbook layouts on my uh, mat my photos 
and I'm just using some thin double-sided tape to super duper speedily uh, chop these up and stick them on the left hand side of this little inserty bit. I really love the way that this turned out on the original page there you could turn over the right side of the heart but I didn't have a, a flippy flappy bit in the middle like I do here and I really love that when when I when I do an inky lift I I do use the original page of course for inspiration but I love to go off on tangents which which is just my normal life if you've listened to uh, my voiceovers before tangents is definitely something that is a common theme on both of my YouTube channels I just get distracted by stories of other things and I think when I'm inky lifting it's like a, a real life craft tangent because I might start with an idea in my head and then completely go in a different direction which you will see in the scrapbook page I I do a few things that I didn't know if they were going to work out and they did thank goodness which was very good so then here I am outlining my little stars here and I decided to do uh, some little dotted lines here instead just to make it a little bit different from the left hand side I did the rest of that off camera so that you didn't have to watch all of those and then it was time to tackle this page now in the original I actually didn't do this page on camera uh, in the original one the paper after the heart flap I think was blank and I'm pretty sure I stuck down all of these strips of washi uh, at a retreat that I went to so that it wasn't on camera and I wanted to do the same here but I thought instead of making it rainbow colored I thought I would stick to black washi tapes and I'm popping a little piece of paper inside my giant envelope uh, for a couple of reasons. The first one is that I didn't want to get glue on my uh, the back of the envelope because I do still want to use this as a, a functional little pocket that I can tuck some journaling into later on. Uh, and I also just didn't want to stick my washi tape to the to the back of the envelope and completely seal it up because I do still have quite a lot of baby brain uh, I've asked people and they say that it stays forever and I have to admit after I had arch it seemed to stick around for a really long time I'm still in that kind of newborn when is a newborn not a newborn anymore that's a question for you is it three months is it before that is it three weeks uh, riddle me that peeps when is when is a newborn just a baby um, I heard a great phrase the other day actually I heard of the phrase taby and a taby is a baby that's not yet a toddler but not a baby baby so they're kind of at that that stage where they're fighting for independence and uh, grasping at new concepts and developing new skills and they're they're growing up but they're not quite a toddler yet so uh, let me know if you have any babies tabies or toddlers or newborns uh, in the comments and if the baby brain sticks around for a long time because my goodness it's it's definitely definitely here so I am super speedily sticking down all of this washi tape and you might be asking Adele why on earth are you gluing it down when washi tape is adhesive well I have some very poor quality washi tape <laughs> for starters and then secondly the the house that I live in and the houses that I live in because of that that I will live in because we rent they're often quite damp uh, and this is I think something I've explained numerous times on Inky Quill channel because I do get people that ask why I use so much adhesive but a lot of the time uh, I'm in Australia and we have super hot summers so days up to you know 45 degrees Celsius and then our winters are very damp because the houses that I live in aren't great uh, aren't fabulously insulated and I just want to make sure that my uh, bits and pieces stay stuck on my albums and on my layouts so to really ensure that they stay stuck I grab some matte gel medium 
I use the Liquitex brand. It's just, it's easy for me to get, lasts forever, and it's a reasonable price. And uh, not sponsored, by the way, not sponsored by any of the things that I'm using today. Uh, but I do like to pass on, especially if you're just getting into mixed media and you don't know what to buy. Um, matte gel medium is something that I find really handy if you're into collage because you can pop it over the top of uh, different collage bits and pieces like I did with this washi and it seals it in. It makes it, it's kind of like putting a, it's not varnish, but it's like varnishing something. It, it seals it all in and keeps it all cozy in there so that bits and pieces can't um, fly up. Now this paintbrush, it's a new one that I've got and the bristles have gone very chunky and I'm not a huge fan of it because you can see big streaks uh, in the brush strokes which is a little bit frustrating. I wanted to add a bit of colour to this back side of the heart flap and I wanted to add it because when I turned the page it was so starkly white uh, the back of the book paper and I wanted it to blend in a little bit and not be not stand out quite so much. I found this nice quote on Pinterest and I have uh, if you're ever looking for art journal quotes to to pop in your um, in your spreads I do have a whole board over on Pinterest called Quotey McQuote uh, which is just filled with random quotes from all over the place about all different types of topics if you need some inspo so this my white gel pen was very uh, jelly and I wanted to just really make sure that I wasn't going to smudge that because knowing me I would smudge it uh, so then my envelope flap had be, had a bit of a, um, a beating with that blue paint that dark blue paint and so I wanted to give it a little bit of something to jazz it up a little bit. So this is a new paint that I haven't, new to me, sorry, it's not new. Uh, it's the Dina Wakely uh, acrylic paint and I've seen them for a long time, but because I have all of the dilutions, or not all, I won't, I refuse to buy the, the pea green one. <laughs> I, um, I'm not a pea green kind of gal, but I have most of the colors and I didn't, I, I couldn't really justify to myself buying the Dina Wakely ones uh, and until I'd used up a bit of the other <laughs> Dilutions paint. So I just bought two little bottles to see if I like it. And so far I've only used it once, so I can't really give you a, a really strong opinion about it. But so far it's, it's a nice paint. I wanted to do a little something to this envelope flap just to jazz it up a little bit. So I grabbed this stencil, I think it's a darkroom door one, um, which I bought from Love to Create and I'm just using some white gesso uh, and a makeup sponge just to do some stenciling and I use white gesso all of the time just as my normal acrylic white paint. Uh, it does the job and honestly I don't have any white acrylic paint because I ran out it got a bit chunky and I haven't bought any more. So when, when in doubt, use other similar things in your craft room that might do the same or a similar kind of job. I just, I felt like this flap just needed something, but I didn't want, um, I didn't want too much detail on there. And to me, circles, circles are a shape that are just nice and simple. They're generic. They go with everything. And they're not too busy and fussy. Oh, I think you just got some sneaks of some pages that you haven't seen yet. They're videos to come. I had some leftover gesso and whenever I do, I just try and um, plonk it on another page just so that I don't waste it. So I just put a little bit on the, the back of this upcoming page because I knew it was one that I was going to gesso in the future anyway. So might as well use up my gesso and not put it in the bin uh, while I've got it. So now, after I dry this little bit, I'm going back. Oh, we're getting all the sneak peeks of pages. Uh, I am going back to my page and I'm trying to figure out if it needs anything else. But alas, it's all done. I was considering some gold Heidi Shine, but I decided against it because it was already quite busy and I just didn't think the gold would go. I know, peeps. 
you know I love my gold hardy shine, but I decided against it this time. So here's a little close-up look. I love the insert. I love the pop of red. I like the stars peeking by on both pages. And I'm really glad after all this time that I inky lifted this journal page uh, because it's definitely one of my, I would say one of my favorite five pages that I've ever made here. I'll give you a little look at the original. Again, I had so much trouble trying to find the page. I'm pretty sure it's the flip through for this Dina Wakely journal up. If it's not, I have filmed it. I filmed it before Violet was born. If it's not up, I'll have to put that up very shortly. Uh, but there's the original page and there is my inky lifted virgin, version. Virgin, version. Getting all my words mixed up here, peeps. Alrighty. I know I don't usually post scrapbooking layouts over on this channel. But like I said, I wanted to put these two together because it didn't make sense uh, to put them on each channel separately. And usually when I post um, videos on Patreon and they're always double or triple or even quadruple. I think I've done a, a six page process video in the past as well, uh, but they're always at least a double process video. And so for this one, I grabbed a random piece of white square paper that I had lying around and I cut a wonky heart. If you fold the paper in half, then you get the same um, shape on both sides which is a, a little tip then I did cut out the part where I trimmed it uh, I fought with my scissors a little bit so I just trimmed it a bit smaller so that there was a bit of space to either side of the, the heart using a pencil and tracing it onto my white cardstock now if you had a cutting machine you could very easily just cut yourself a, a template um, I was happy to just do a bit of a freehand heart and go with the flow, uh, but you don't need a cutting machine. So then I'm using this wood grain paper for the right hand side of the heart. So I just used the uh, template as a template um, and I'm just cutting that out. And I realistically, I should have traced it on the back side of the paper so that you didn't see my pencil lines or I should have rubbed out my pencil lines, but alas, I did neither. And you might be able to see a little bit of pencil, but like my nan always says, a man riding by on a horse wouldn't be able to see it. So it's a okay with me. I went through my stash. I've got a box of uh, 12 by 12 papers that have been cut into. So they're not quite 12 by 12 anymore, but they're too big for my uh, normal scrap paper drawers and because this is a beachy photo uh, of the pelicans or the pelicanes as Archie and I like to call them uh, I grabbed any uh, any papers that kind of had blue undertones grays uh, and then there was a bit of a sandy peachy kind of color corally color as well so I didn't give it really give it too much thought and I'm just cutting two strips of each of the papers. And what these strips of paper are going to represent uh, is the washi tape from the original journal spread. And I wanted to have a bit of a mix here, but unlike the original, which was very rainbow in color with all of those washi tape strips, I wanted to stick to a, a bit more of a muted uh, color scheme with the blues and the grays. Some of the papers I am cutting a third and I'm making sure to, if they're, uh, cut, there are a couple of text papers and I'm making sure that the words go across so that I don't have wonky words. Uh, and I'm also making sure, I sped this up a little bit now because you've seen me cut 50,000 bits of paper. <laughs> uh, I also made sure that I had a few different thicknesses. So I had some that were thicker and some that were thinner as well. And I'm not too concerned about the length uh, as long as, because they're only going across half of the page. Uh, but I did want to make sure that they were at least, you know, six inches or so uh, wide. So I'm going to show you a sped up version because I am just repeating the same process over and over again using double-sided tape and taping these to the right hand side. I'm making sure that uh, I can overlap the heart outline because I'm going to cover that up by sticking the wood grain paper over the top. 
but I don't want the paper strips to go all the way across the page so if they are a bit too long I'm just giving them a, a cut or a, a tear because I've got to trim off the edges anyway uh, and just making them making them squeeze in so something when I'm doing a technique like this I usually like to start with uh, some of the wider papers and I just find that it's easier to work with the wider strips first and then overlap the thinner uh, strips over the top I'm trying to I'm definitely making sure that the same pattern doesn't go next to each other and I'm also trying to make sure that I spread out the uh, different colors so you can see in that middle-ish section I've got that really bright blue uh, vertical stripe paper and then I've balanced it on both sides by having a gray on top and a gray below before I do another blue paper but in all honesty I'm not giving it too much thought um, I'm just trying to, to space them out a little bit now you could very easily put all of the papers down first before you stick them on I am definitely a stink of a stink a stick and plonk kind of gal and I just go with the flow because I have realized that if um, if I put down everything before I stick it down I move it even if I don't mean to I move it and it annoys me that I can't get the bits of paper back to where I had them uh, before so that's why I don't do it but um, the great thing about paper craft and art journaling and mixed media is that everyone has their own different style and you just go with whatever works for you so now I have stuck my layout to the uh, to my uh, messy mat and I'm just trimming off all these excess bits and I hadn't actually planned to do anything with these they were for the bin they were bits of little rubbish but then they stuck to my scissors as you can see there and I was planning on leaving the left hand side of the heart uh, empty but then I thought hey what if I use these tiny little scraps as a bit of a collage feature on the left hand side of the heart I those were too stuck together so I couldn't even get them apart uh, but I I wasn't going to cover all of the heart because I feel like with this page there's a lot going on and I like to leave a little bit of white space uh, now in this page particularly the white space is literally white space um, but by white space if you're doing this on colored cardstock you could easily just leave a, a bit of a blank space of solid color so that your eye has a bit of a, a place to rest and it's not so chaotic and busy uh, so I just stuck all of those bits down added a few extra and then uh, I thought about sticking down the wood grain uh, side of the heart but then of course I'm adding even more collage bits here there and everywhere again trying to balance out the colors a little bit um, I thought that blue might be a little bit too blue so I just tore it up and um, made it into two sections instead of just the one so then I stuck down my heart using some double-sided tape and I was going to leave it at that but then I decided to go a little bit paint crazy which you'll we'll see in just a moment I when I start a page I usually have one idea in mind not the finished page completely uh, but for this one I I really didn't know where it was going I thought I'd just have a play uh, and the good thing about inky lifting a previous page that you've already done you could either inky lift oh let's get hang on I'll get back to that this was black gesso and look at it it has completely dried but it's just a big rubbery ball this is also black paint that has dried but it's not quite as dry as the gesso was the gesso went in the bin it there was no saving it uh, but this black paint I might be able to save a little bit but that's what I was talking about with the the climate at the moment uh, the the weather the temperature in Australia is not my friend when it comes to mixed media supplies 
But like I was saying, when you ink lift a page that you've already done, you could either do a journal page to another journal page, a journal page to a scrapbook page or vice versa, a scrapbook page to a journal page. You, you have something to base it off already uh, and the page might end up looking completely different to the one that you're getting inspiration from. But it's just the fact that you've got a bit of a base to go off and um, it's something that I really enjoy doing, doing especially across going across the um, going from an art journal page to a, a scrapbook layout and vice versa. For the stenciling, I didn't want to do the same paisley stencil that was in the original one. Uh, so I grabbed this one from my stash. It's got, I thought it looked a bit, a bit watery. They looked like little splashy splashy splashes uh, and I'm just using my makeup sponges I grab these from I think I either get these from the two dollar shop or Kmart and I usually chop them in half uh, because they don't last long they go very hard I don't wash them and uh, they yeah they don't last very long um, they because they are cheap they tend to um, fall apart a little bit as well they're not Funny enough, they're, they're made for makeup and they're not made for paint, but yet I test their boundaries uh, every time I'm crafting. So then I'm getting my big noggin in the way and outlining all of these little splishy splashes with my white Uni Ball Signo Broad gel pen. I'm doing a combination of just normal solid lines and dashy dash lines. Uh, I just like the variety. And I think it gives it a bit of extra detail. I knew that I was covering some of them up with the photo, but I wanted, it's just easier for me to do them all before um, instead of playing around. This is one of my favorite containers in my craft room. And it is a container full of tissue paper and vellum and foam and all sorts of glittery goodness. Uh, and I really need to use it more often. I do sometimes forget about it. I have a craft room tour that is going to come up in a few months time. I have some, oh, I got some news today, peeps, and found out that we have to move in five weeks time. Yay. Uh, so I have a video that I um, am almost finished filming for Patreon, which is the move of my craft room from its previous room to where it is now. And it goes through uh, why I'm moving, where I'm moving all my bits and pieces to. It goes through the decision making of putting all of the bits and pieces into uh, the different areas of my craft room, why I'm putting them there. I bought new Calyx units as well, so I've got a lot more storage. Uh, so that video will go up on Patreon and then I will do a final craft room tour before I move uh, because... It's just, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun time. We don't know where we're moving to yet. That's the fun of renting. Uh, the Unfortunately, our landlord wants to move from where they live in China back to Australia. So they're going to move into here, which is fair enough. It's all good. I'm glad we got five weeks. Uh, it gives us a bit of time to try and find somewhere that's pet friendly and has four bedrooms so that uh, I can have a craft room and the kids can have rooms as well. So that's going to be a fun adventure. Uh, and you might see some sneak peeks of moving and packing up my craft room over on Insta stories. And I'll probably do the same thing, um, which I have done previously when I moved craft rooms as well. Uh, over on Patreon, I'll do another video of setting up my craft room uh, as well and then eventually do another craft room tour probably at the end of the year of my new room in the new house so while I've been ranting and complaining about having to pack up my entire life's existence into boxes I am doing uh, some journaling around the left hand side of this heart and I freaking love the way the white writing pops against the background and it goes with the inside of the white heart I'm also really, really happy that I finally get to use that chipboard pelican. My goodness, that chipboard pelican, I have, I have been very tempted to throw it in the bin. And I didn't. It was just annoying me. Uh, so I finally got to use it, as well as this water bird. I don't know the correct 
term for that uh, pinkish bird. Even though it's not a picture of those types of birds, I thought, hey, I don't think I've got another water bird layout to scrap. So we're just we're just going to go with it and put all the water birds together. Uh, so this was the photo is not too um, detailed and um, there's no real f big focal point. So I was able to overlap my title uh, over the top in a bit of a empty space where the water was. And then to tie in the black on the left hand side, because I didn't do stenciling like I had in the original, I just grabbed a couple of these. They're not puffy. They're like a plasticky. They're not an, an they're not enamel. They're kind of a plasticky thicker. Uh, and so I just did a couple of hearts. And then I realized that I had smudged black paint up the top of that, that white side of the heart. And so sprinkly bits to the rescue. I just did some little diddly hearts and stars and pretended that it was meant to be there. So now I'm not using Heidi Shine Peeps. I'm using uh, some Liquitex acrylic ink in the gold color. The reason why I recently took my gold away with me and I, it's not liking me. I'm getting lots of oily rings with my Heidi Shine. And I, to tell you the truth, we were fighting. I, I was mad at my Heidi Shine. So I thought I'd use the acrylic ink instead. It does a beautiful job. Uh, it does take a little while to dry and is a bit thicker. So sometimes you need a bit of water to kind of um, water, it, water it down a little bit. I'm doing some man-made splattering over here and there just so I get it in the right spots um, but this is how the final page has come together I freaking love it I didn't expect to do the black at the start of this page I was going to make it really white and airy and beachy and ah but it didn't end up like that uh, and I, I'm really glad it didn't because I like the way it turned out so thanks for watching today peeps uh, like I said I wanted to give you a little look at some of the content that I do over on Patreon because it is quite different to what I do over on uh, my YouTube channels. There's a lot more detailed videos and they all kind of have a, a specific focus. Whereas my YouTube videos are just random bits and bobs and layouts and journal pages um, that I enjoy making. So then I had a lot of trouble finding the page. So I just sped that bit up. Uh, so there's those two. And then this is the third interpretation of the same kind of page. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Have a happy Valentine's Day. That's why I did a heart. I didn't mention that the whole video. I did a heart because it's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, peeps. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.